The Coach Kevin McMillan Show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. I'm Chris Brinkley. UT Martin coming off a couple of wins this past week, one at Southeast Missouri and the other game over Tennessee State. Coach, let's look back at the Southeast Missouri game. You win that one 102 to 70, and uh, that was a game. Well, first of all, let's go back to the SIU Edwardsville game because we haven't talked about that. Now, if you Google the flu game, you'll find a Michael Jordan playoff game. But, but in UT Martin women's basketball, the flu game is the game that Coach couldn't make. Coach, you're, you look much better. Your color's back. You feel better? I am a lot better than I was. A uh, little shocked at how long it took to get over it. But uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't a fun almost a week, actually. Uh, we played SAU Edwardsville. Coach, you didn't make the trip. It was a Saturday game. You got it Friday morning and didn't feel well? Friday, uh, Friday night, I was having some trouble sleeping. Uh, I couldn't get warm. Oh. And But I didn't have fever. But I, I mean, I couldn't get warm. I had on more uh, a blanket under the covers and I couldn't get warm. I went and just laid by the fire with all that on. Couldn't get warm. It's a great visual. Thought that's <laughs> not very good. Uh, still didn't have any temperature. I mean, it didn't, it didn't show up. And then about, uh, about nine o'clock, when I was kind of starting to get ready to, to go for the game, I took it one more time and just said, I'll take it one more time. And it was like almost 102. Wow. And uh, so uh, got straight straight to the doctor, and they gave you a test for the flu, which I'd never had before, which was awful. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they said, yes, you've got the flu. And uh, it was so, it was funny. Uh, I talked to uh, my wife's father, my father-in-law, who's a, who's a pharmacist, and uh, talked to another pharmacist in town, and they were adamant. Uh, the doctor was adamant, do not go, and I thought, you know, I've never missed a game for being sick. I played with the flu when I was in high school, which is the last time I ever had it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, you know, I got to go, and then uh, the doctor, the doctor is great, you know, it's, it, we live in Martin, Tennessee, where everybody's a Skyhawk fan, it was like, if you go and get the rest of the team sick for the tournament, I won't forgive you. No, you're not going the game. So, anyway, um, I just told them, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm not going to go. And so I met with the team and we talked about it. And uh, I got them on the on the road. And then I literally got in bed Friday about one o'clock. And uh, and I got out of bed for about an hour and a half through Monday. Wow. Uh, and then slept a ton Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday because, I mean, I didn't really get out of my system like Thursday or Friday. So not only did you miss the game, I guess you missed some practices too. Definitely, we were off uh, right after that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't miss any practices. I got back in Tuesday for practice. But Tuesday night, it just, I mean, we practiced for about an hour and a half and, uh, and it just wiped me out uh, for, for Wednesday. and. Uh, then we got through Wednesdays, and it wiped me out. And about Thursdays when I started feeling kind of back to normal. Coach, you, you obviously digital, you had a chance to watch some of the game, and, of course, you had the game film. But one of your concerns with the game was effort. Yeah, and, and you know, we had some other things going on that weren't, uh, that kind of got overlooked. Shea was not there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I wasn't there. Shea wasn't there. Elizabeth was probably playing at about 50%, and Asia was probably playing at about 75%. So I mean, we had a lot of issues, but you can't cry about it because every team is going to have issues during the year, and you've got to be able to handle the adversity. And, right. Uh, and we we collectively didn't do a, a great. You know, I didn't have them prepared. Uh, they didn't do a good job handling it, and uh, and so that's you kind of take your medicine. Pardon the pun. Coach, whenever you um when when you were rolling through conference games, winning by twenty plus, but it's so difficult for a team to go undefeated in their own conference. You just don't see it very often nationally. No, because everybody knows you so well. Uh, you're bound to have an off night. Um, you're bound to have a night where there's an ankle turn or a, or a flu hits your sickness or, uh, you know, you just never know. And so to run through a, a schedule undefeated is pretty impressive. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it is, it's hard to do. And uh, any team that, uh, you know, I was fortunate to be involved with a team at Gibson County that went undefeated. Right. And, uh, and that, it, it got to a point where you had to even ignore it, that. Uh, and you had to focus on the games, and you know I felt I felt good that this team could handle that kind of thing should it present itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but you know it, it didn't play out that way. But it is it's very hard to see teams. It's kind of funny. I had mentioned it around your team, uh, and one of the assistant coaches said, "Don't say that." It's almost like a no hitter in baseball that if you talk about it, you might you don't want to focus on that. Right, and you know 
it's never been our deal to win uh, this game or that game or go through this streak and win it. No, it's more about who, who's next mm -hmm. and what do we need to do that. You know, right now all of our focus is on our day off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally it's our day off, and I want I want our kids resting. I want our staff resting. Um, and then it's all about tomorrow's practice. And yeah. if you can keep that focus, everything will be fine. But you do. You see stuff that, uh, you know, uh, a free throw shooter that's about to shoot free throws, a kicker that's about to kick the game-winning field goal, and a pitcher in baseball. You know, you see all those things, but I don't, I don't think the jinxing thing has a lot to do with it. Coach, let's look at the Southeast Missouri game. You were back. Uh, you're on the road at Southeast Missouri. As we said, effort was a concern in that game. It was a close game early on. I thought we didn't come out of the gate playing really hard. Um, <clears throat> it looked like we were, eh, I, don't, I don't know if we were trying to kind of figure ourselves out again or what. I mean, I just, I couldn't tell. But I, I thought, I thought we, our effort got progressively better mm -hmm. uh, as the first half wore on. And I thought the last two or three minutes uh, was pretty good. The thing that that game showed was the first five minutes of the second half, uh, we, we said, okay, we're here to, to finish this thing off. And, mm -hmm. and, our, and I thought our kids really responded well. And, uh, you know, Asia had a big game. Katie had a big game. Uh, Butler and Newsom are out there doing what they do best. And, uh, you know, it, it just an overall uh, very solid performance, especially in the second half. Asia with 27 points and 15 rebounds, a career high for her. Katie has a career high 19 and then 18 for Jasmine, or 18 for Jasmine and 19 for Heather Butler. And, and truly was a team effort. 102-70, you won over Southeast Missouri and you score 100 points. Again, and then in this last game back on Monday night, you went over Tennessee State 104-65, and, and a similar performance in that you score a lot of points. Asia plays extremely well. Katie, Jasmine, and Heather put up big points too. Yeah, and they're very, very similar games when you uh, look at the box scores. Um, the things that stand out a little bit in this one, uh, you know, Jasmine has 11 assists. I think she had 10 at the half. Mm -hmm. uh, she also had seven steals. Uh, Shea played really well. Um, and she was flying around, tipping balls, getting rebounds, uh, doing things that we need her to do. And, uh, and I thought the second half of this one, I think we jumped out really early, very aggressively. 18-3 to three run to yeah, start the game. And, and I really thought that we were uh, focused. And then truth of the matter is we subbed. And when we subbed, we went way down. And uh, that's very disappointing to me because I want to keep things going. Um, and so the second half, we came out and made another big run with that first group, and they uh, and we were able to kind of keep that going. But uh, I thought Asia and Shay and Jasmine on the on the press front of that press really got aggressive and um, and made some plays that uh, that were able to let us separate a little bit. But uh, you know I thought Elizabeth played better mm -hmm. uh, late in that ball game. Uh, you know, we just need we just need kids growing up and uh, and being the best they can be to help us all out. Jasmine flirted with the triple double, which she has several times in her career. Most of the time, one of the categories is rebounds. In this game, she had 15 points, 11 assists, and seven steals. She was coming up from behind, uh, and getting steals. That you know, she's so fast uh, that when she turns it on, it's you know, you're, as a guard, you're looking behind her to see where she is, and uh, and and. You know, she had a chance to, to get two or three more, um, you know, during that game. And uh, it just when, when she's playing hard, she's hard to deal with mm -hmm. both ends. Uh, mm -hmm. When she's being aggressive, she puts so much pressure on the on the defense. And when she's being aggressive on the on defense, she puts so much uh, pressure on the offense. So, uh, you know, but she's loving the fact that other people are scoring because she wants to – she wants right. to assist more than she does to score. And I've been telling you that for years. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you're kind of starting to see that now. Well, and that's what's misleading. You look at a box score and say, oh, she had 15. But I think there's a statistic points responsible for, and that's where those assists and even some of the steals come in. Well, she, yeah, you, you look at that, and it's uh, it's probably in the in the 50s, uh, probably half mm -hmm. of our points she's responsible for. And uh, and she would rather be responsible for them rather than uh, it, from with the pass rather than with the shot. And, uh, you know. Hopefully she'll keep having 11, 12 assists a game because it, uh, it it's nice when you see 21 assists off, off 34 baskets. And there was one stretch in the game, you don't see this very often in women's college basketball, you scored seven points in 20 seconds. Well, we, we picked up, I think we hit a bucket, got a steal, mm -hmm. hit a bucket, got a steal, hit a bucket in that little stretch. I think if that's the right one I'm yeah. thinking of. And, uh, 
you know, that's the part of the press that I was impressed with in the second half is that we really kind of turned it up and responded to what Coach Russell was trying to get him to do. Uh, it, it blows my mind why you don't figure it out in the first half when he's telling you what to do. But mm -hmm. uh, when, our, when our bunch kind of figured out what we were supposed to be doing, uh, they really, really did a good job. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll talk about uh, some individual honors for the Skyhawk women's team and the games ahead this week on the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. At this time, we would like to thank our basketball corporate donors. Carry Insurance. Dynamix. Parker Hannafin. State Farm. Surgical Associates of Martin. Vans Institutional Pharmacy, Walmart. Back on the Coach Kevin McMillan Show. Coach, we talked a little bit about Asia's uh, week against uh, Tennessee State and also Southeast Missouri. She is the OVC player in freshman of the week, 26 points per game, 11 rebounds, and three and a half steals. Rarely do you see the freshman of the week also win player of the week. We, the last time we've seen him probably was back with Butler mm -hmm. Newsom. Right. Uh, you know, and, and it's going to be tougher on somebody like Asia because you've got Butler Newsom out there with you. Uh, but she's she has really responded lately to the challenges that we put in front of her. Um, proud for her to, to get some recognition. And uh, she got to play in front of her mom uh, up at, at SEMO and played mm -hmm. had a good ball game. And, uh, you know, you just like to see kids that are playing hard and trying to do things right get uh, – to, to get rewarded, and, uh, and hopefully she'll get uh, a lot more. We, we've talked a little bit about her demeanor. If you, if you didn't know our players or their classifications, uh, you would not know she was an underclassman if you were just watching the game. She does not carry herself like a freshman. No, not, at this point, she's not. Uh, and we actually were talking about that today, uh, how much she's grown up mm -hmm. this year. Because at the beginning of the season, it was uh, a little timid, a little unsure, and, uh, and she's just kind of come into her own. and. Uh, and kind of starting to flourish, and, and I think as she's gotten better, our team has gotten better. I think you can attribute a lot to her and Shay and, and Katie and, and the responsibility that they're taking for what their job is for this team. It's been a long time uh, in UT Martin women's basketball history since we've seen a post player put up these kind of numbers. It has to be rewarding for you as a coach to see that, that switch flip, and then all of a sudden she really starts playing some basketball. Yeah, I think, you know, probably back to probably Zabrina Harris was mm -hmm. the last one that put up these kind of numbers, and uh, and Zabrina was a, just a dominant post player in this league. And, uh, and Asia's not like her. She's a different type of post player, uh, but she's kind of putting up some of those same numbers. And, and it is, it's so helpful to have a post player that is doing that because it takes so much pressure off of your perimeter players. Uh, it's no coincidence that Asia's – playing like she's playing and now you're seeing Katie follow suit because right. Asia makes Katie's life easier. Mm -hmm. And as Katie makes shots, she's making Asia's life easier. So it becomes this ball that's just rolling and you really don't know who's responsible for which thing at that point. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what a team is. Uh, and, and, and hopefully we'll get a couple more people to plug in as the tournaments are approaching. You know, it is phenomenal. We're getting to the point where we're seeing consistency from Heather, Jasmine, and Asia, and it's what your fourth and fifth players do that determine what the outcome of the game is going to be. Yeah, and last year we were worried about a third. Right. Uh, and this year we're worried about a fourth and a fifth, and, and I really want to be worried about an eighth and a ninth, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to no, be honest. Right. Uh, and, and, but we've got those people here. It's a matter of them uh, deciding that they want to be factors, you know. Tierra Caldwell last night could have had 15 points and 12 rebounds in 10 minutes of action. She mm -hmm. could have. You know, Elizabeth's starting to play a little bit better. Uh, Chelsea Roberts flirts with playing good, and then she'll kind of back down a little bit. Uh, you know, Megan White can come in and make shots for you. Charisma Tyson can come in, and she made a good couple of good plays last night. And so, I mean, we're looking for consistency from everybody. Speaking of consistency, Heather uh, continues to score double digits in, in every game. She's done that in 123 consecutive games now. 10th all-time in NCAA history, and she's the 25th uh, all-time leading scorer in the history of the NCAA. As her career winds down, you only have three regular season games remaining. She continues to shatter records and move up the career list. She does, and and, and so does Jasmine. Jasmine. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of it's kind of strange. You, you can't really talk about one without talking about the other um, because, one, they've helped each other to get those things, but the other one is if, if – 
Jasmine wasn't here, what would Heather's numbers I've be? I've wondered that, or vice and if, versa. And, and if yeah. Heather wasn't here, what would Jasmine's numbers be? Mm -hmm. And I really don't think they'd be that different because I think they help each other so much. Mm -hmm. um, they, they take some attention away. They take some pressure off each other. Uh, and both of them continue to, to move up. And, and uh, every honor that they get is deserving. And, uh, and I hope that they have to build a new trophy case for themselves when this whole thing's over. Coach, you have three games remaining. Murray State on Saturday at Eastern Illinois the following Thursday, and then Austin P the following Saturday. Murray State is a team that gave you trouble at Murray, even though you won that game by one point. Yeah, they, they shot the ball really well in the first half, and uh, I, I don't think that we were, we were back then talking about our effort. Right. We were having effort issues. And, and if, you, if you go back to our season and look, uh, the Illinois game is the one where we saw that we could press. Well, it took, uh, it took a few games for us to go. It, it, it's like this. You, you try to make a change for something. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what it is. When you first make that change, you're all gung-ho and, and so you're going to kind of jump way up. Well, then there's going to be a point where you go, you know, are we really going to do this or not? Maybe we can go back and do it the other way. It, if you you see it with a golf swing, you see it with a with shooting a basketball. You know, for shooting the basketball, I shoot like this. Well, what happens if I turn this hand a little bit and then start shooting? Is it better? Well, it's going to get immediately better, and then it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And the worst is going to go. Okay, is that really the right thing to do or not? Well, that's what you saw from us during there. There was about a three game stretch in there gotcha. where the the players were going. Are we really are going to press? We have to, so we're going to have to play this hard. And we're like, yes, you are. Let's go. Come on. And um, I think we've grown up a lot since then. Oh, yeah. Uh, You're you know, right. I mean, if you can get through the worst, then you can improve even better than you, you ever were. Right. And that, that's what we that's what we saw. And, and the thing is that I'm really stubborn and, you know, bless my family's heart. But if I think I'm right, mm -hmm. I'm going to hammer it home until you just absolutely prove me wrong. And when we saw out of that Illinois game that I went, okay, we can do these things. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, we're fixing to do those things. Well, there was a couple of games in there where we didn't do so well, and it was, but I was going, okay, it's not because of that's what we're doing. It's because you guys aren't bought in and playing hard. Right. If you'll buy in and play hard, that that's going to be fine. And the catch is, 99% of the times, if kids play hard, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. Um, you just seem to you try to find what that bunch can do that may be different from everybody else that helps them win games. And that we had that little stretch early on in the conference and uh, and Murray's a, was a bad team to play at that time because they, of the way they play. Right. They they're happy to go down there. They want to shoot it fast. They want to play fast. And you know, we just kind of fed right into that. Mm -hmm. And and I think you know they're going to come do that again, and uh, and we're going to we're going to see what our what kind of response we've made since then. But broadcasters make so much of well, if it's an up tempo team, how do you slow them down? You don't necessarily want to slow them down, but you have to do things to take them away from their strengths. Yeah, you, we want certain numbers of possessions in a game. We don't right. want them to be limited um, because we think we have enough firepower that over time that that's going to give us a chance. And uh, but you have to be very selective mm -hmm. about what you decide to do with Florida State. Uh, we went down there to play Florida State, and defensively, we did a very good job against them. We held them to 74 points, which if you'd have told me going in, we're going to hold Florida State 74 points, I'd have said, I'll take it right now. Mm -hmm. And but they were huge and athletic. <laughs> yes, but offensively, we only played one half like I wanted us to. And it, that game, we wanted to be very careful about the possessions. You know, we wanted to press, and we wanted to do all those things, but that game wasn't to speed the game up and get a certain number of possessions. It was just to try to keep them off balance. Uh, and we until the second until late 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 in the first half when I think we were down uh, about forty to fifteen, mm -hmm. uh, you know our kids we we had hit that point where okay we're about to get embarrassed so what do you want us to do and it was like why are you asking now I mean why didn't you ask me at the beginning oh you want us to do it this way well since this is not working we're going to try it well we went score 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 right before the half came back out in the second half and played played even mm -hmm. uh, or, or won the second half, I don't remember which. Um, and, it, you know, I just wish we would have done that the, the whole ball game. But it was a totally different type of attacking, it's just what you're saying, uh, than you would against, mm -hmm. say, Murray State. I mean, you have, to, you have to handle those games. But you're still trying to do the same thing, which is take the other team out of what they do best. Right. Coach, one final note, kind of non-basketball. Um, within the group of basketball teams, usually there are some nicknames. 
Uh, what are some of the nicknames on your team? <laughs> no, you want to wait and save the answers for later? Nicknames of the players? Yeah, or just anybody. Coaches, players. Oh, I'm sure I've got one. I don't know what it is. You're not supposed to know your own nickname um, unless it's flattering. I don't know, you know. No. They'll, I, we're we're going to need to get them okay. and let them go over that with you. And, okay. Because uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. That's fair. I don't know. Yeah. Most of the time, I just know. You don't have nicknames for them? You call everybody by their last name, mostly? Most of the time, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I really don't. Yeah. I don't have nicknames. I, I, I try to usually call them what they want to be called. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, when I get after them or start chewing on whatever, whatever I start calling them in is what I call them all the time. <laughs> you know, poor Butler is always going to be Butler. I mean, I don't know that I've ever called her Heather. Uh, you know, mm. Butler, come here. I, it's just, it's mm. become natural yeah. now. So, I don't know. That's Do you know their question. middle names? No, not mm. many. Yeah. Uh, some of them I've known over time, but they've asked me to forget. Yeah. Uh, but no, not not many of them. We're going to get somewhere on this. What's your middle name? Kevin. <laughs> What's your first name? Daniel. See, that's the... Yeah. And, and I'll, there's a story about that. This is a family show, and so yeah, I'm going to have to cut, cut part of it out, though. Really? The, Daniel's a family name. Mm -hmm. And so they were going to name me... Uh, they wanted Kevin and Daniel and McMillan. And... Uh, Evidently, when I was in my mother's stomach, I would I kicked a lot, oh. and I woke my father up <laughs> kicking a lot, and he would he would get up and say, "Is that something, kid, <laughs> kicking again?" And so instead of Kevin Daniel, they flipped it oh, to the Daniel, Daniel Kevin, Kevin to I follow with the exactly kid that's kicking that's again. Good. So that's good. That was why, but it's been miserable ever since because the whole world wants to. Well, now what's your first name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Daniel. What? But what do you want to be called? Kevin. Yeah. Why? Because uh, you probably got that in school whenever. You oh, all the time. Yeah. And you get it when you fill out stuff, when you do anything for a bank. Uh, I went to the when I had the flu, and I went yeah. pulled up. To, it took them thirty minutes at the pharmacy to get or? the to get the uh, to get the medicine for me because yeah. they said we don't have Kevin McMillan. Yeah. And after about fifteen minutes, I'm sitting there like this. And I'm like, <laughs> Try Daniel. They went, oh yeah, it's right here. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I got my. That's how I got. By the way, name. I'm not surprised you kicked a lot. I don't know. What's your middle name? That's Wait a minute, that's, that's not fair. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the one asking the questions. <laughs> but I just asked one. <laughs> no, that's the Coach Kevin McMillan show. I'm Christopher. We'll come back to that. Um, just don't don't think we'll forget that. Thanks for watching. The Coach Kevin McMillan show is brought to you by BSN Sports. Thank you for your support of UT Martin Basketball.